This is Rising Up with Sonali, and I'm your host, Sonali Kolhatkar. You can watch this show on Free Speech TV nationwide and listen to it on Pacifica radio stations and affiliates. United Airlines has become synonymous with brutal treatment of its passengers after a video of a Vietnamese-American doctor being brutally dragged down an aisle has gone viral. David Dow was one of four passengers that United Airlines was attempting to remove from its full flight at Chicago's O'Hare, O'Hare Airport to accommodate four staff members. Flight crew called in aviation police who manhandled Dow, who then had to be hospitalized and may need reconstructive surgery. Protests on social media and at airports against United Airlines have drawn attention to just how fed up American consumers are at the routine abuse and gouging they face from carriers. It turns out the airline industry is exceptional in how a special allowance by the federal government enables it to overbook seats and remove paying passengers involuntarily in order to serve their bottom line. My guest is Jamie Court. He's the president of Consumer Watchdog, author of The Progressive's Guide to Raising Hell, How to Win Grassroots Campaigns, Pass Ballot Box Laws and Get the Change You Voted For. Welcome to the program, Jamie. It's my pleasure to be back. So how unusual is what um, other passengers managed to capture on video on that fateful United Airlines flight um, when this um, poor doctor was dragged down an aisle with a bloodied nose? Is this the, the, this sort of extreme, seemingly extreme treatment really extreme? Is it the exception rather than the rule? Well, I think it's the poster child for the problems we have with U.S. airlines and the insensitivity they have towards their customers, the way they treat us like things, not like people, and and the way they increasingly take our humanity when they put us on a flight, which is the way a lot of big corporations increasingly treat us. This is absolutely an extreme case. There's no question. It may be the most extreme case, uh, but it is symptomatic of a larger trend. And what we've seen is uh, really ever since Um, the consolidation of the industry, which was uh, deregulation, started it in 1978. And the consolidation, which has really increased uh, in the last five to 10 years, we have four carriers controlling 85% of the air traffic. And a lot of that consolidation was approved under the Obama regime. With that, we don't really have the power to to vote with our feet. Uh, We don't have the, the power as consumers to fight back. And the airlines themselves, as you mentioned, have extraordinary powers given by the government, uh, both because of the uh, post-9-11 world, which gave them certain powers to treat passengers uh, that they suspect to be problems in certain ways, but also generally because the industry is such a powerful lobby that they've gained privilege in Washington. And we haven't had an airline passenger bill of rights. We've seen uh, in the last uh, congressional cycle that the major airlines spent directly $7 million, excuse me, United spent $7 million, over $7 million lobbying against a passenger bill of rights uh, legislation. And in the larger industry, including its contributions to the trade association, United spent over 40 million lobbying against uh, this type of uh, regulation that would have prevented these type of abuses. The type of legislation that never saw the light of day because of United's lobbying, Uh, legislation that would have prevented families from being separated on a plane, Hmm. that would have prevented airlines from charging people for using the bathroom. Yes, there was a legislation (laughs) to do that, and that did not pass. uh, I mean, I'm hard-pressed to think of another industry where, you know, you pay for something, you make a reservation, you pay for it. It's not transferable. You can't just give it to somebody else. It's in your name. You show up, you're seated, you're ready to go. And suddenly they say, oh, we're going to take, we're going to just, uh, you know, kind of ruin your schedule. We're going to upend you and we're going to kick you off. Um, Let's talk about what the Department of Transportation allows the airline industry to do. If you go to the website, transportation.gov, and look up the the, um, consumer guide to air travel, which just sounds so nice, there's a section on overbooking, which says overbooking is not illegal legal and most airlines overbook their scheduled flights to a certain extent in order to compensate for no shows. Passengers are sometimes left behind or bumped as a result. When an oversale occurs, the Department of Transportation requires airlines to ask people who aren't in a hurry to give up their seats voluntarily in exchange for compensation. Those passengers bumped against their will are, with a few exceptions,
exceptions entitled to compensation. It's, and then there's a whole section on voluntary bumping and involuntary bumping. But it just seems like this is something the government has bent over backwards to give into this industry. If you routinely fly flights with a few people who don't show up, that's on you, right? I mean, people have to pay for their flights. If you change your flight, you have to pay the airline a hefty fee to change your flight. You don't just get to not show up. So presumably any tickets they've sold to customers, they're already getting money for. How did they get to do this? It, you know, it's, it's, it's the sheer power of their, uh, their political lobbying clout, their cash register uh, giving, uh, and the lack of really any sort of opposition of voice. There are some, you know, travel uh, advisors who are sort of on this beat. There's the pilots union, but they have to be careful what they say and do. But other than that, you know, the airlines own Washington, D.C. And they give a lot of money and they throw a lot of money around. And they also, and this is really interesting if you think about it, they also uh, make and break routes for congressional members and senators. So if a senator wants a direct flight from a national airport uh, in uh, D.C., so they don't have to go to Baltimore or Dulles, to L.A., well, you know, the CEO of Alaska Airlines makes sure that happens. And even if you're a progressive senator from the state of California, you sure want to keep that flight, don't you? Wow. You remember during the tunnel gate, tunnel gate, uh, uh, the, the uh, you know, bridge gate fiasco with uh, Christie, some of the connections were exposed with that there was a special uh, for New Jer for New Jersey uh, Center, there was a special flight that was kept, even though it was losing money. You're suggesting uh, our elected officials have sold the rest of us out? Well, I'm <laughs> saying that the cozy relationships between the airlines industry goes far beyond the power of their ability to generate through, you know, United's 40 million in lobbying and, and giving, you know, information and campaign funds. It's also personal because people have to get home if they work in Washington to their districts and the airline CEOs control that capacity and whether an air, a, a specific route that caters to a specific senator or congressional representative is still there tomorrow. And that is a far greater power than maybe any other industry has over the personal lives of our elected officials. And that's a big reason when a CEO calls and says, you know, there's a real problem with a passenger bill of rights that says, you know, every time we change someone's uh, air, airline uh, route, we have to pay them. Uh, you know, that's going to that's going to drive up prices and, and, and the cost of fuels already up. And, and, and I do think whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you listen a little closer to the CEO who controls when you're going to get home to your family on the weekend. I, I just it's just human nature. It's wrong. But it's why right now in this moment in history, Washington needs to get off the dime and off their butts and do a passenger bill of rights like what's being proposed in Canada. There should be a guarantee that if you occupy a seat and you're escorted on a plane, you don't get thrown off of it for any reason. There Except, should be a guarantee of course, security that, issues, which we, you know, everybody other, wants other than that. Other the national security <laughs> issue, absolutely. Yeah. Other than the national security issue. So, and also, of course... And this was for employees, Sonali. This wasn't even for another passenger. This was for employees of the airlines uh, So to, to, to occupy that seat. So I think those type of guarantees, and also we need to do what we haven't done in previous years. We gotta say, if they change your route, if they cancel your flight and there's no good reason, and it happens all the time, you get paid. You know, this has gotta be more of an equal playing field here. Uh, I don't see why uh, there shouldn't be new protections across the board, and this just outrageous incident should open the door to all of them. And frankly, if we started to map all of the um, flights to senators and, con and, and congressional representatives district that didn't make economic sense but still exist, I think a lot of those people in Washington would be pretty embarrassed because what happened in New Jersey was not extraordinary. There, there, there is a lot of very personal um, give and take between this airline industry and these legislators. Now it's time for them to give back something to the people. Now, Jamie, there was much made in the months and years following September 11th about the airline industry's uh, losses and how if the government didn't step in, the entire industry would fold. And, you know, we saw the uh, shares dropping. How lucrative, how 
flush in profits and cash is the industry right now because we're at a stage where we're paying for bags to get on. We're paying for a few extra inches of space because the space of the seats is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Certainly no food. You're lucky if you get a packet of peanuts. You're expected to pay for headphones to rent them, movies, etc. So one might imagine that these airlines are struggling and that's why they're penny pinching. Are they struggling? No, they're doing really, really well. And the reason they're doing really well is because a partially of the penny pinching, you're paying more if you want an aisle, and you're paying more if you want some leg room, you're paying more literally, uh, you know, if you don't want to be in the back of the plane, uh, you're paying for each piece of luggage. But it's also because when the price of uh, gasoline, uh, jet fuel dropped, because crude prices were well under $40 a barrel for a while when, you know, traditionally they've been up to $100 a barrel, the airline industry did not reduce its fares. It said, we're not going to reduce our fares just because our fuel costs go down. We're going to keep that money so that we don't have to raise it when fuel costs go up. Well, it's been about two years of pretty stable crude costs. And the airline industry's kept those fares really high. They keep nickeling and diming us. So they are rolling in cash. And yet, yes, there are plans to make seats even smaller. Wow. Uh, there is plans to make leg room even smaller. <laughs> this is an industry that in market and in regulation is king. And that's why we need the government to step in. And they are consolidating, as you were saying earlier. It's not like there's that many choices left anymore, right? You can say, all right, I'm going to boycott United, which, of course, a lot of people have said. But there are not too many choices, especially if you are trying to save money because most of us are struggling. You need to visit family over Thanksgiving. Prices are sky high. You may still get your cheapest flight on United because there's just not that many options, right? That's absolutely right. And you also have miles potentially on United. And there was a merger a couple of years ago. So your, your airline happened to merge with United. Or look, Alaska and Virgin just completed a merger. There's a Virgin America. So there's you know, four airlines controlling 85% of the air traffic, they have all the power economically. They've, they've had the power in Washington, D.C. Uh, the first uh, uh, senator or, or representative who steps out of the box with a passenger or bill of rights in Washington to deal with this situation and adds on all the things we're really concerned about is going to raise a very important debate that hasn't been, been heard in a long time. And I think that it, it, it's, it's that we've given this industry a lot of protections. And it's not just that they can remove people if they want to, and they're allowed to overbook flights. It's also that, you know, um, while there's a lot of transparency in terms of safety, there are some pretty strict limits when something goes wrong about your rights to sue an airlines and what they have to do. I mean, we treat this industry in many ways uh, as exceptional. But the one place we don't treat them as exceptional is how they have to treat the consumer. And, you know, I wrote a book years ago, you may remember, called Corporateering, about how corporations increasingly, you know, aren't just operating in markets, but try to reduce us to things. They take our legal rights. They take our freedoms like privacy. Well, in the airline space, our humanity is completely shriveling. There is less and less concern for the, you know, the cleanliness of the air we breathe. They circulate air that's not safe. They, they you know, for very long flights, they give us very, very little personal space. They, they camp us on the tarmac sometimes for three hours before our flight even goes and don't let people off the plane. That type of behavior has to be addressed because it does affect a lot of people's health. And I think Dr. Dow's brutal treatment by United really is a poster child for all these abuses. And it's now time for Washington to answer back. Uh, and I'm wondering, um, Jamie, you know, <laughs> there was a time when one looked forward to air travel because of something fun. These days, of course, people dread it. They dread what you have to go through the airport. They dread the flight itself. Um, what would a passenger's bill of rights do? Um, and what is in the works right now? So let's end on that. Would a passenger's or could a passenger's bill of rights address not only this overbooking problem and the involuntary removal, but also those um, you know, ways in which uh, companies ga price gouges and mistreat us physically? Absolutely. Well, companies shouldn't be able to, to shrink the size of a seat beyond a certain uh, space. They shouldn't be able to charge us more for, for, for an aisle or a, uh, or, or a window seat or to sit in the front of the plane. If they want to give some extra leg room, if they want to make something beyond what is the minimum requirements, uh, you know, like a first class ticket with some extra service, sir, they should be able to charge more, a business class ticket. 
but for the, the you know the general type of accommodation that we're expecting there should be minimal requirements and when you buy a ticket that's all that you should be paying for there shouldn't be restrictions on where you can sit in the plant a plane after you commit to a ticket when you're going to charge an extra $40 to sit in the front or to get an aisle seat because it, it's not transparent so there needs to be both more transparency in terms of prices but also some basic floor for what every passenger gets when they board an airline. I think baggage fees are another issue. Uh, you know, every bag in many of these airlines costs 25 bucks. That should be built into the price of, 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 of travel. Uh, there should be some limits in terms of uh, how long you should sit on a tarmac. If it's more than, let's say, an hour, maybe you should have to turn back to a gate. Uh, there's some real horror stories about people who've taken six hour flights to turn to 12 hour flights because they're sitting around so long. And there are real health issues for people when they travel. It's caused a lot of pain and suffering, and this industry is largely immune uh, from the, co the kind of harms it caused, like it did to Dr. Dow. So right. I and think this is the beginning. This is the beginning of something big, and I just we just need some people in Washington to raise the issue up. Dr. Dow seems to be preparing to sue United Airlines, and we'll see what comes of that lawsuit and if it'll have a deterrent effect. Jamie, what's the website for Consumer Watchdog? Consumerwatchdog.org. And we'll post a link to that from our site later today. Thanks, as always, for joining us, Jamie. Thank you. Great to see you again. My guest is Jamie Court. He's the president of Consumer Watchdog. I'm Sonali Kolhatkar. We're online at risingupwithsonali.com, where you can sign up for our daily newsletter. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, and Vimeo.